So, uh, filming a little addendum to what I just filmed at the voting booth location. Um, I didn't plan to open my camera and start recording, like, the process of, uh, getting documented for voting without an ID. I've been voting without an ID for a few years. Um, and I thought it was very interesting today. It was, I thought the staff was super friendly today, like, more so than usual. Um, but yeah, so I decided to just open my camera and start recording while I was at the polling location before entering the booth, um, when they had instructed me, like, to go over to the thing. There's, like, a little side table. If you vote without an ID, they, like, ask you to go get verified. Um, and usually I take a picture of, like, the forms and stuff they're giving me. But this time I decided, like, they were gonna... They had, like, this old Polaroid camera, and it seemed really interesting. So I just turned, opened my camera, started recording while I was in there. Um, I also know Dave Ridley had some issues in Winchester, I believe. Uh, somewhere out in Cheshire County he was voting, I think, like, last year. And it was, like, not the local election. It might have been the presidential, so it was, like, you know, more people there and stuff. But today is a local uh, city elections. Very small ballot. Um, so... I wanted to make sure, like, it kind of in, not just response to, like, Dave, that happening to Dave, but so I wasn't quite sure, like, to, if they were going to try and limit my recording in any way, but they really didn't. I was, uh, very simple about it. I just put it on the table there. Um, and so, yeah, you can see that video. So, uh, now there's the introduction to where, what was going on when I began that video. And then, uh, after I turned it off, um, I didn't plan on recording the people at the first booth. Uh, that hand you the ballot physically. Um, I kind of wish I had just because it was a little funny and I just wanted to make note of what happened there. So I went over there with the developing Polaroid that's on the uh, form that they give you, the affidavit kind of, to say, I am this person, um, I'm allowed to vote, uh, and I am who I say I am, basically. It's like uh, verification that you are who you say you are without having an ID. And... When I went over to the ladies at the voting area, or the ladies that give you the ballot, um, I went to hand them the form, and she was like, oh yes, this looks good. And then she handed the form back to me. And I was like, am I supposed to get this? And then she was like, oh, wait, no, you're supposed to have a ballot instead. And then she took the form back, gave me the ballot. So I, I thought that was interesting. It would have been nice to have kept that form. I got a little, uh, you know, I got a snapshot of it, so I have it for my records. Um, but of course they, yeah, of course they should have the form with, uh, my face and my signature saying I'm this person, I'm voting, you would think, like, that's their record, not mine. Um, but now we can both share it because of, of digital. Um, so I think it, w it probably would have been easier if the state, they must have gotten a good deal, you can see in that last video, on these bulk, like, Polaroids, or maybe they wanted to use Polaroids, but I don't see why they couldn't have just taken a digital photograph of the people coming in to do that. I feel like in the past it was a digital photo, I think I remember the lady, like, showing it on the screen. Um, so I guess while I'm here, like, um, I can give you a little background on other times I voted like that. Uh, New Hampshire, several years ago, passed a voter ID law that, str uh, strict, like, made more strict the, uh, qualifications for being a New Hampshire voter. You had to be someone who was, like, an established resident, and then they laid out what an established resident was. And it had to do with, like, registering cars and, like, paying taxes on some things. Um... And they, with that, it also passed, like, this thing that you were supposed to have an ID to vote, and the person was supposed to ask you for your ID. And the, the verification of identity is a good thing, because there was some uh, real security lapses in the sense of, like, non-qualified voters voting. Um, however, I thought the idea that everyone had to have an ID was stupid, because the government should be able to verify people's identities through the simple questions and forms and stuff that they have that people have already filled out to register to vote to get to that process to begin with, and, and they still have same-day registration here in New Hampshire. So people can still go in and register same day, and I guess that's where things get a little sketchy, because, like, they claim unqualified voters are coming from elsewhere and, like, maybe double-dipping, like they're voting in one state and another. Um, there have been some cases people can, can do a Google search of, like, New Hampshire voter fraud cases and see the, the history of it. Um, sometimes it's nefarious, like, activist types that want to cast multiple votes, but a lot of times it is elderly folks. Um, and some of them, it seems they play stupid, maybe some did make honest mistakes, and whoops, I forgot I already voted, but, um, but yeah, so there's, a few years ago they passed that, and I decided I would be voting without an ID on principle, I'm already registered, they know who I am, they, I have their government ID with the picture on it, it's like, 
there's so there's no need really to have this ID. There's other ways of verifying identification without a person having an obligation to carry something. Um, so I've always tested it, and this is the I've was living in Keene at the time they passed this, so I remember doing it there. And then here, the first time I came, they make you when you go in. Uh, the first time they took my picture, the last few times they have not, and then this time again I noticed they did. And I think the, the picture thing is fine, that kind of makes sense on their end, like, hey, this is the person that came in and voted. Um, so the first time I did it, it seemed like they were kind of confused by the process, they were confused as to why I didn't have an ID, or why I was acting like I don't need one, I'd just say I don't, I don't have it, I don't need to carry it, so I didn't bring it. Um, and... So the first time I did that here in Concord, I noticed there, it seemed like confusion. Like they were, they weren't quite sure what to make of me doing that. The second time, it seemed like the person was upset. Like they were not happy with me doing this as though I was, they were like, what? I, just to kind of paraphrase and kind of the questions I remember being asked that time, like I wouldn't quite say it was an interrogation, but I was asked several questions. They were like, well, why don't you have your ID? Don't you think you need it? Like aren't you supposed to prove to us who you are, like that sort of thing. And I was like, no, I think the law states I can still vote, and as long as I do the steps to verify my identity to you right now, like, I'll sign the paper and you can take my picture and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, the, the last time that was, I, I forget if that was last year's election or two years ago, but it seemed like there was a little bit of, uh, like, upsetness about that, like I was doing something wrong. And then uh, today, what was interesting, and you can see it all on camera, it seemed like quite the opposite experience, where it was very, uh, very welcoming. Like, they seemed very nice and very generous about the fact that I didn't have an ID, and it wasn't at all like I was doing something wrong. It was like, okay, well, we'll just take your picture, and they were very friendly about it. Um, so I thought that was great. Um, I guess there's an element to which the, the poll workers, they might be trained to be, like, spot criminal types versus... Some folks, like, on principle aren't going to do this, so they have this gray area they're dealing with. But, uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to give that background information about, uh, the, uh, the action of voting, um, why I did the, the steps that I went through to get to, you know, voting without an ID, etc., what it's like here in New Hampshire. Um, and also, yeah, you can see the, the video of my ballot as well. I'll show you the, the great folks that, and, and animals that I cast votes for. Um, I think there was like one person that was on the ballot that I voted for that I was like, all right, I think he demonstrates like a marketable, m more pro-liberty approach than the uh, opposite person running. But like, yeah, and, and, and that was the local race. That was really the only one I could find. But Vermin Supreme got a vote. Chelsea Manning got a vote. Daryl W. Perry for mayor. Um, I know I'll definitely be going with Vermin in the, the general of the two, two or three Dems that aren't like totally evil seeming. Um, there's very positive qualities about Tulsi Gabbard, and there's very positive qualities about Julian Castro. So those are two people that I'd say, like, I don't know if I'd give them a vote personally because of some other issues that they're not totally cool on, but I'd encourage more support for them because they represent the least bad qualities of the Democratic field of candidates. And uh, so yeah, there's a little side note there that had nothing to do with the actions of today, but I know everybody's thinking about those sort of things because we got the evil agent orange in power now, and... I don't think, nobody wants any more of that, but it's like, what's the alternative to, because it's, it's just like, they're all bad, man. It's pretty bad, so, go Vermin. I mean, Vermin Supreme is a guy that, personally, you can, like, sit down and talk to and, like, have a conversation with. I'm sure some of, like, the, the lesser-known Democratic candidates might be like that as well, but they also have pretty bad upfront positions, where Vermin's an anarchist, and, um, yeah, the ponies and all that stuff is great, too, but, like, if you talk to him, like, person to person he talks about like mutual aid and like voluntarily assisting each other and, and things like that that everyone can get behind it's not about force or violence and yeah um, so I hope everyone enjoys uh, their their voting festivals their voting traditions and that uh, it, all people are forwarding like non-violent or at least non-initiatory of violence approaches in the sense of not hurting innocent people that aren't you know committing violence against others because um, so much government and so much power is focused on people that it shouldn't be pow uh, focused on, like innocent people that aren't involved in the terrible things the government is doing. And yet we all gotta, we all gotta pay the man. We all gotta pay the, the rent to the state, so to speak.